The Waffen SS German pronunciation, VAFN, Armed SS, was the armed wing of the Nazi Party's SS organization. Its formations included men from Nazi Germany, along with volunteers and conscripts from both occupied and UN occupied lands. The Waffen SS grew from three regiments to over 38 divisions during World War II, and served alongside the Heer Regular Army, Uniformed Police, and other security units. Originally, it was under the control of the SS Führungshauptamt SS Operational Command Office beneath Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler. With the start of World War II, tactical control was exercised by the High Command of the Armed Forces OKW, with some units being subordinated to Kommandostab Reichsführer SS Command Staff Reichsführer SS directly under Himmler's control initially, in keeping with the racial policy of Nazi Germany, membership was open only to people of Germanic origin so-called Aryan ancestry. The rules were partially relaxed in 1940, and later the formation of units composed largely or solely of foreign volunteers and conscripts was authorized. These SS units were made up of men mainly from among the nationals of Nazi-occupied Europe. Despite relaxation of the rules, the Waffen SS was still based on the racist ideology of Nazism, and ethnic Poles, who were viewed as subhumans, were specifically barred from the formations. Members of the Waffen SS were involved in numerous atrocities. At the post war Nuremberg trials, the Waffen SS was judged to be a criminal organization due to its connection to the Nazi Party and direct involvement in numerous war crimes and crimes against humanity. Former Waffen SS members, with the exception of conscripts, who comprised about one third of the membership, were denied many of the rights afforded to military veterans. Topic: Origins, 1929 to 39. The origins of the Waffen SS can be traced back to the selection of a group of 120 SS men on the 17th of March 1933 by Sepp Dietrich to form the Sonderkommando Berlin. By November 1933, the formation had 800 men, and at a commemorative ceremony in Munich for the 10th anniversary of the failed Munich Putsch, the regiment swore allegiance to Adolf Hitler. The oaths pledged were pledging loyalty to him alone and obedience unto death. The formation was given the title Leibstandart, Bodyguard Regiment Adolf Hitler, La. On 13 April 1934, by order of Himmler, the regiment became known as the Leibstandart SS Adolf Hitler LSSAH. The Leibstandart demonstrated their loyalty to Hitler in 1934 during the Night of the Long Knives. When the Nazi regime carried out a series of political killings and the purge of the Sturmabteilung SA, Led by one of Hitler's oldest comrades, Ernst Röhm, the SA was seen as a threat by Hitler to his newly gained political power. Hitler also wanted to conciliate leaders of the Reichswehr the Republic's army and conservatives of the country, people whose support Hitler needed to solidify his position. When Hitler decided to act against the SA, the SS was put in charge of eliminating Röhm and the other high-ranking SA officers. The Night of the Long Knives occurred between 30 June and 2 July 1934 and saw the killing of up to 200 people. This included almost the entire SA leadership, effectively ending its power. This action was largely carried out by SS personnel including the Leibstandart, and the Gestapo. In September 1934, Hitler authorized the formation of the military wing of the Nazi Party and approved the formation of the SS Verfügungstruppe SSVT, a special service troop under Hitler's overall command. The SSVT had to depend on the German army for its supply of weapons and military training, and they had control of the recruiting system through local draft boards responsible for assigning conscripts to the different branches of the Wehrmacht to meet quotas set by the German High Command Oberkommando der Wehrmacht or OKW in German. The SS was given the lowest priority for recruits, even with the difficulties presented by the quota system. Heinrich Himmler formed two new SS regiments, the SS Germania and SS Deutschland, which together with the Leibstandart and a communications unit made up the SSVT. At the same time, Himmler established the SS Junkerschule Bad Tolz and SS Junkerschule Braunschweig for military training of SS officers. Both schools used regular army training methods and mainly used former army officers as instructors. In 1934, Himmler set stringent requirements for recruits. 
They were to be German nationals who could prove their Aryan ancestry back to 1800, unmarried, and without a criminal record. A four-year commitment was required for the SSVT and LSSAH. Recruits had to be between the ages of 17 and 23, at least 1.74 meters (5 feet 9 in) tall, 1.78 meters (5 feet 10 in) for the LSSAH. Concentration camp guards had to make a one-year commitment, be between the ages of 16 and 23, and at least 1.72 meters (5 feet 8 in) tall. All recruits were required to have 20/20 eyesight, no dental fillings, and to provide a medical certificate. By 1938, the height restrictions were relaxed, up to six dental fillings were permitted, and eyeglasses for astigmatism and mild vision correction were allowed. Once the war commenced, the physical requirements were no longer strictly enforced, and essentially any recruit who could pass a basic medical exam was considered for service. Members of the SS could be of any religion except Judaism Jewish, but atheists were not allowed according to Himmler in 1937. Historian Bernd Wegner found in his study of officers that a large majority of the senior officers' corps of the Waffen-SS were from an upper-middle-class background and would have been considered for commissioning by traditional standards. Among later Waffen-SS generals, approximately six out of ten had a university entrance qualification abitur, and no less than one-fifth a university degree. In 1936, Himmler selected former Lieutenant General Paul Hauser to be inspector of the SSVT. Hauser worked to transform the SSVT into a credible military force that was a match for the regular army. On the 17th of August 1938, Hitler declared that the SSVT would have a role in domestic as well as foreign affairs, which transformed this growing armed force into the rival that the army had feared. He decreed that service in the SSVT qualified to fulfill military service obligations, although service in the SS Totenkopfverbande SSTV, would not. Some units of the SSTV would, in the case of war, be used as reserves for the SSVT, which did not have its own reserves. For all its training, the SSVT was untested in combat. In 1938, a battalion of the Leibstandart was chosen to accompany the army troops in occupying Austria during the Anschluss, and the three regiments of the SSVT participated in the occupation of the Sudetenland that October. In both actions no resistance was met, recruiting ethnic Germans from other countries began in April 1940, and units consisting of non-Germanic recruits were formed beginning in 1942. Non-Germanic units were not considered to be part of the SS, which still maintained its racial criteria, but rather were considered to be foreign nationals serving under the command of the SS. As a general rule, an SS division was made up of Germans or other Germanic peoples, while a division of the SS was made up of non-Germanic volunteers and conscripts. Topic. World War II Topic 1939 Topic Invasion of Poland Himmler's military formations at the outbreak of the war comprised several subgroups that would become the basis of the Waffen SS the Leibstandart SS Adolf Hitler LSSAH, under then Obergruppenführer Joseph Sepp Dietrich. The Inspectorate of Verfügungstruppe SSVT, under Gruppenführer Paul Hauser, which commanded the Deutschland, Germania and der Führer regiments. The latter was recruited in Austria after the Anschluss and was not yet combat ready. The Inspectorate of Concentration Camps, under Gruppenführer Theodor Icke, which fielded four infantry and one cavalry death's head Standarten, comprising camp guards of the SS Totenkopfverbande SSTV. These troops wore the SSTV skull and crossbones rather than the SSVT SS runes. Police units of Obergruppenführer und General der Polizei Kurt Dalluiges Ordnungspolizei, which reported to Himmler in his capacity as Chief of German Police. These troops used police ranks and insignia rather than those of the SS. In August 1939, Hitler placed the Leibstandard and the SSVT under the operational control of the Army High Command. OKH. 
Himmler retained command of the Totenkopfstandarten for employment behind the advancing combat units in what were euphemistically called special tasks of a police nature. In spite of the swift military victory over Poland in September 1939, the regular army felt that the performance of the SSVT left much to be desired, its units took unnecessary risks and had a higher casualty rate than the army. They also stated that the SSVT was poorly trained and its officers unsuitable for combat command. As an example, OKW noted that the Leibstandart had to be rescued by an army regiment after becoming surrounded by the Poles at Pabianice. In its defense, the SS insisted that it had been hampered by having to fight piecemeal instead of as one formation, and was improperly equipped by the army to carry out its objectives. Himmler insisted that the SSVT should be allowed to fight in its own formations under its own commanders, while the OKW tried to have the SSVT disbanded altogether. Hitler was unwilling to upset either the army or Himmler, and chose a third path. He ordered that the SSVT form its own divisions but that the divisions would be under army command. Adolf Hitler resisted integrating the Waffen-SS into the army, as it was intended to remain the armed wing of the party and to become an elite police force once the war was won. During the invasion, war crimes were committed against the Polish people. The Leibstandart became notorious for torching villages without military justification. Members of the Leibstandart also committed atrocities in numerous towns, including the murder of 50 Polish Jews in Blonny and the massacre of 200 civilians, including children, who were machine gunned in Zalexiu. Shootings also took place in Bolsloyek, Torziniek, Gaorowo, Mawa, and Vloklawek. Ike's SSTV field forces were not military. Their military capabilities were employed instead in terrorizing the civilian population through acts that included hunting down straggling Polish soldiers, confiscating agricultural produce and livestock, and torturing and murdering large numbers of Polish political leaders, aristocrats, businessmen, priests, intellectuals, and Jews. His Totenkopfverbande troops were called on to carry out police and security measures in the rear areas. What these measures involved is demonstrated by the record of SS Totenkopf Standart Brandenburg. It arrived in Vloklawek on the 22nd of September 1939 and embarked on a four-day Jewish action that included the burning of synagogues and the execution on mass of the leaders of the Jewish community. On the 29th of September, the Standart traveled to Bydgoszcz to conduct an intelligentsia action. Topic. First Divisions In October 1939, the Deutschland, Germania, and der Führer regiments were reorganized into the SS Verfügungsdivision. The Leibstandart remained independent and was increased in strength to a reinforced motorized regiment. Hitler authorized the creation of two new divisions, the SS Totenkopf Division, formed from militarized Standarten of the SS Totenkopf Verbande, and the Polizei Division, formed from members of the National Police Force. Almost overnight the force that the OKW had tried to disband had increased from 18,000 to over 100,000 men. Hitler next authorized the creation of four motorized artillery battalions in March 1940, one for each division in the Leibstandart. The OKW was supposed to supply these new battalions with artillery, but was reluctant to hand over guns from its own arsenal. The weapons arrived only slowly and, by the time of the Battle of France, only the Leibstandart battalion was up to strength. Topic. 1940 Topic. France and the Netherlands The three SS divisions and the Leibstandart spent the winter of 1939 and the spring of 1940 training and preparing for the coming war in the West. In May, they moved to the front, and the Leibstandart was attached to the Army's 227th Infantry Division. The Der Führer Regiment was detached from the SSVT Division and attached to the 207th Infantry Division. The SSVT Division minus der Führer was concentrated near Munster awaiting the invasion of the Netherlands. 
The SS Totenkopf and Polizei divisions were held in reserve. On the 10th of May, the Leibstandard overcame Dutch border guards to spearhead the German advance of 10th Corps into the Netherlands, north of the rivers towards the Dutch Greb line and subsequently the Amsterdam region. The neighboring Der Führer advanced towards the Grebeline in the sector of the Grebeberg with as a follow-up objective the city of Utrecht. The Battle of the Grebeberg lasted three days and took a toll on Der Führer. On the 11th of May, the SSVT division crossed into the Netherlands south of the rivers and headed towards Breda. It fought a series of skirmishes before Germania advanced into the Dutch province of Zeeland on 14 May. The rest of the SSVT division joined the Northern Front against the forces in Antwerp. The Leibstandard on the same day, entered Rotterdam. After the surrender of Rotterdam, the Leibstandard left for The Hague, which they reached on 15 May, capturing 3,500 Dutch as prisoners of war. In France, the SS Totenkopf was involved in the only Allied tank attack in the Battle of France. On 21 May, units of the 1st Army Tank Brigade, supported by the 50th Northumbrian Infantry Division, took part in the Battle of Arras. The SS Totenkopf was overrun, finding their standard anti-tank gun, the 3.7 cm Pack 36, was no match for the British Matilda tank. After the Dutch surrender, the Leibstandart moved south to France on 24 May. Becoming part of the 19th Panzer Corps under the command of General Heinz Guderian, they took up a position 15 miles southwest of Dunkirk along the line of the AA Canal, facing the Allied defensive line near Watton. A patrol from the SSVT division crossed the canal at St. Venant, but was destroyed by British armour. A larger force from the SSVT division then crossed the canal and formed a bridgehead at St. Venant, 30 miles from Dunkirk. That night the OKW ordered the advance to halt, with the British Expeditionary Force trapped. The Leibstandart paused for the night. However, on the following day, in defiance of Hitler's orders, Dietrich ordered his three battalion to cross the canal and take the heights beyond, where British artillery observers were putting the regiment at risk. They assaulted the heights and drove the observers off. Instead of being censured for his act of defiance, Dietrich was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. On that same day, British forces attacked St. Venant, forcing the SSVT division to retreat. On the 26th of May, the German advance resumed. On the 27th of May, the Deutschland regiment of the SSVT division reached the Allied defensive line on the Lai River at Merville. They forced a bridgehead across the river and waited for the SS Totenkopf division to arrive to cover their flank. What arrived first was a unit of British tanks, which penetrated their position. The SSVT managed to hold on against the British tank force, which got to within 15 feet of Commander Felix Steiner's position. Only the arrival of the Totenkopf Panzerjäger platoon saved the Deutschland from being destroyed and their bridgehead lost. That same day, as the SS Totenkopf division advanced near Merville, they encountered stubborn resistance from British Army units, which slowed their advance. The SS Totenkopf 4 Company, then committed the Le Paradis Massacre, where 97 captured men of the 2nd Battalion, Royal Norfolk Regiment were machine gunned after surrendering, with survivors finished off with bayonets. Two men survived. By 28 May, the Leibstandard had taken the village of Wormhout, only 10 miles from Dunkirk. After their surrender, soldiers from the 2nd Battalion, Royal Warwickshire Regiment, along with some other units, including French soldiers, were taken to a barn in La Plaine aux Bois near Wormhout and Esquilbeck. It was there that troops of the Leibstand at 2nd Battalion committed the Wormhout Massacre, where 80 British and French prisoners of war were killed. By 30 May, the British were cornered at Dunkirk, and the SS divisions continued the advance into France. The Leibstandart reached Saint-Étienne, 250 miles south of Paris, and had advanced further into France than any other unit. By the next day, the fighting was all but over. German forces arrived in Paris unopposed on 14 June and France formally surrendered on 25 June. Hitler expressed his pleasure with the performance of the Leibstandart in the Netherlands and France, telling them, henceforth it will be an honor for you, who bear my name, to lead every German attack. Topic. 1940 expansion Himmler gained approval for the Waffen-SS to form its own high command, the Kommandant der Waffen-SS within the SS Führungshauptamt, which was created in August 1940. 
It received command of the SSVT, the Leibstandard and the Verfügungsdivision, renamed Reich, and the armed SSTV regiments, the Totenkopf Division together with several independent Totenkopf Standarten. In 1940, SS Chief of Staff Gottlob Berger approached Himmler with a plan to recruit volunteers in the conquered territories from the ethnic German and Germanic populations. At first, Hitler had doubts about recruiting foreigners, but he was persuaded by Himmler and Berger. He gave approval for a new division to be formed from foreign nationals with German officers. By June 1940, Danish and Norwegian volunteers had formed the SS Regiment Nordland, with Dutch and Flemish volunteers forming the SS Regiment Westland. The two regiments, together with Germania, transferred from the Reich Division, formed the SS Division Wiking. A sufficient number of volunteers came forward requiring the SS to open a new training camp just for foreign volunteers at Senheim in Alsace-Lorraine. Topic 1941 At the beginning of the new year, the Palaise Division was brought under FHA administration, although it would not be formally merged into the Waffen-SS until 1942. At the same time, the Totenkopf Standarten, aside from the three constituting the TK division, lost their death's head designation and insignia and were reclassified SS infantry or cavalry regimente. The 11th RGT was transferred into the Reich division to replace Germania. The remainder were grouped into three independent brigades and a battle group in Norway. By the spring of 1941, the Waffen-SS consisted of the equivalent of six or seven divisions, the Reich, Totenkopf, Palaise, and Wiking divisions and Kampfgruppe later division Nord, and the Leibstandart, one SS infantry, two SS infantry, and SS cavalry brigades. <laughs> Balkans in March 1941, a major Italian counterattack against Greek forces failed, and Germany came to the aid of its ally. Operation Marita began on 6 April 1941, with German troops invading Greece through Bulgaria and Yugoslavia in an effort to secure its southern flank. Reich was ordered to leave France and head for Romania, and the Leibstandart was ordered to Bulgaria. The Leibstandart, attached to the 40th Panzer Corps, advanced west then south from Bulgaria into the mountains, and by 9 April had reached Prelep in Yugoslavia, 30 miles from the Greek border. Further north the SS Reich, with the 41st Panzer Corps, crossed the Romanian border and advanced on Belgrade, the Yugoslav capital. Fritz Klingenberg, a company commander in the Reich, led his men into Belgrade, where a small group in the vanguard accepted the surrender of the city on 13 April. A few days later the Royal Yugoslav Army surrendered, the Leibstandart had now crossed into Greece, and on 10 April engaged the 6th Australian Division in the Battle of the Cledi Pass. For 48 hours they fought for control of the heights, often engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat, eventually gaining control with the capture of Height 997, which opened the pass and allowed the German army to advance into the Greek interior. This victory gained praise from the OKW, in the order of the day they were commended for their unshakable offensive spirit, and told that the present victory signifies for the Leibstandart a new and imperishable page of honor in its history. The Leibstandart continued the advance on 13 May. When the reconnaissance battalion under the command of Kurt Meyer came under heavy fire from the Greek army defending the Klisura Pass, they broke through the defenders and captured 1,000 prisoners of war at the cost of six dead and nine wounded. The next day, Meyer captured Castoria and took another 11,000 prisoners of war. By 20 May, the Leibstandart had cut off the retreating Greek army at Metsovon and accepted the surrender of the Greek Epirus Macedonian army. As a reward, the Leibstandart was nominally redesignated as a full motorized division, although few additional elements had been added by the start of the Russian campaign and the division remained effectively a reinforced brigade. <laughs> <laughs> Soviet Union Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union, started on the 22nd of June 1941, and all the Waffen SS formations participated, including the SS Reich, which was formally renamed to SS Das Reich by the fall of 1941. 
SS Division Nord, which was in northern Finland, took part in Operation Arctic Fox with the Finnish Army and fought at the Battle of Sala, where against strong Soviet forces they suffered 300 killed and 400 wounded in the first two days of the invasion. Thick forests and heavy smoke from forest fires disoriented the troops and the division's units completely fell apart. By the end of 1941, Nord had suffered severe casualties. Over the winter of 1941–42 it received replacements from the general pool of Waffen-SS recruits, who were supposedly younger and better trained than the SS men of the original formation, which had been drawn largely from Totenkopf Standarten of Nazi concentration camp guards. The rest of the Waffen-SS divisions and brigades fared better. The SS Totenkopf and Polizei divisions were attached to Army Group North, with the mission to advance through the Baltic states and onto Leningrad. The SS Division Das Reich was with Army Group Center and headed towards Moscow. The SS Division Wiking and the Leibstandart were with Army Group South, heading for the Ukraine and the city of Kiev. The war in the Soviet Union proceeded well at first, but the cost to the Waffen SS was extreme. By late October, the Leibstandart was at half strength due to enemy action and dysentery that swept through the ranks. Das Reich lost 60% of its strength and was still to take part in the Battle of Moscow. The unit was decimated in the following Soviet offensive. The Der Führer Regiment was reduced to 35 men out of the 2,000 that had started the campaign in June. Altogether, the Waffen-SS had suffered 43,000 casualties, while the Leibstandart and the SS divisions were fighting in the front line, behind the lines it was a different story. The 1 SS Infantry and 2 SS Infantry Brigades, which had been formed from surplus concentration camp guards of the SSTV, and the SS Cavalry Brigade moved into the Soviet Union behind the advancing armies. At first, they fought Soviet partisans and cut off units of the Red Army in the rear of Army Group South, capturing 7,000 prisoners of war, but from mid-August 1941 until late 1942 they were assigned to the Reich Main Security Office headed by Reinhard Heydrich. The brigades were now used for rear area security and policing, and were no longer under Army or Waffen-SS command. In the autumn of 1941, they left the anti-partisan role to other units and actively took part in the Holocaust. While assisting the Einsatzgruppen, they participated in the extermination of the Jewish population of the Soviet Union, forming firing parties when required. The three brigades were responsible for the murder of tens of thousands by the end of 1941. Because it was more mobile and better able to carry out large-scale operations, the SS Cavalry Brigade had two regiments with a strength of 3,500 men and played a pivotal role in the transition to the wholesale extermination of the Jewish population. In the summer of 1941, Himmler assigned Hermann Fedulin to be in charge of both regiments. On 19 July 1941, Himmler assigned Fedulin's regiments to the general command of HSSPF Erich von dem Barczalewski for the systematic combing of the Pripyat swamps, an operation designed to round up and exterminate Jews, partisans, and civilians in that area of Belarusian SSR. Fedulin split the territory to be covered into two sections divided by the Pripyat River, with the 1st Regiment taking the northern half and the 2nd Regiment the south. The regiments worked their way from east to west through their assigned territory, and filed daily reports on the number of people killed and taken prisoner. By 1 August, SS Cavalry Regiment 1 under the command of Gustav Lombard was responsible for the death of 800 people. By 6 August, this total had reached 3,000 Jews and partisans. Throughout the following weeks, personnel of SS Cavalry Regiment 1 under Lombard's command murdered an estimated 11,000 Jews and more than 400 dispersed soldiers of the Red Army. Thus Fedulin's units were among the first in the Holocaust to wipe out entire Jewish communities. Fedulin's final operational report dated 18 September 1941, states that they killed 14,178 Jews, 1,001 partisans, 699 Red Army soldiers, with 830 prisoners taken and losses of 17 dead, 36 wounded, and 3 missing. Historian Henning Pieper estimates the actual number of Jews killed was closer to 23,700. Topic 1942. 
Topic: 1942 expansion. In 1942, the Waffen SS was further expanded and a new division was entered on the rules in March. By the second half of 1942, an increasing number of foreigners, many of whom were not volunteers, began entering the ranks. The 7th SS Volunteer Mountain Division Prinz Eugen was recruited from Volksdeutsche ethnic Germans, drafted under threat of punishment by the local German leadership from Croatia, Serbia, Hungary, and Romania and used for anti-partisan operations in the Balkans. Himmler approved the introduction of formal compulsory service for the Volksdeutsche in German-occupied Serbia. Another new division was formed at the same time, when the SS Cavalry Brigade was used as the cadre in the formation of the 8th SS Cavalry Division Florian Geyer. Panzergrenadier divisions the front-line divisions of the Waffen-SS that had suffered losses through the winter of 1941–1942 and during the Soviet counter-offensive were withdrawn to France to recover and be reformed as Panzergrenadier divisions. Due to the efforts of Himmler and Obergruppenführer Paul Hauser, the new commander of the SS Panzer Corps, the three SS Panzergrenadier divisions Leibstandart, Das Reich, and Totenkopf were to be formed with a full regiment of tanks rather than only a battalion. This meant that the SS Panzergrenadier divisions were full-strength panzer divisions in all but name. They each received nine Tiger tanks, which were formed into the heavy panzer companies. <laughs> Demyansk pocket The Soviet offensive of January 1942 trapped a number of German divisions in the Demyansk pocket between February and April 1942. The 3rd SS Totenkopf was one of the divisions encircled by the Red Army. The Red Army liberated Demyansk on 1 March 1943 with the retreat of the German troops, for his excellence in command and the particularly fierce fighting of the Totenkopf. Obergruppenführer Theodor Icke was awarded the oak leaves to the Knight's Cross on 20 May 1942. 1943 1943 expansion the Waffen SS expanded further in 1943. In February, the 9th SS Panzer Division Hohenstaufen and its sister division, the 10th SS Panzer Division Frensberg, were formed in France. They were followed in July by the 11th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Division Nordland, created from Norwegian and Danish volunteers. September saw the formation of the 12th SS Panzer Division Hitlerjugend using volunteers from the Hitler Youth. Himmler and Berger successfully appealed to Hitler to form a Bosnian Muslim division, and the 13th Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Hanska, first Croatian, the first non-Germanic division, was formed to fight Josip Broz Tito's Yugoslav partisans. This was followed by the 14th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS, first Galician, formed from volunteers from Galicia in western Ukraine. The 15th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS First Latvian was created in 1943, using compulsory military service in the Ostland. The final new 1943 division was the 16th SS Panzergrenadier Division Reichsführer SS, which was created using the Sturmbrigade Reichsführer SS as a cadre. By the end of the year, the Waffen SS had increased in size from eight divisions and some brigades to 16 divisions. By 1943 the Waffen-SS could not longer claim to be an «elite» fighting force. Recruitment and conscription based on «numerical over qualitative expansion» took place, with many of the «foreign» units being good for only rearguard duty. Kharkiv On the Eastern Front, the Germans suffered a devastating defeat when the 6th Army was defeated during the Battle of Stalingrad. Hitler ordered the SS Panzer Corps back to the Eastern Front for a counterattack with the city of Kharkiv as its objective. The SS Panzer Corps was in full retreat on 19 February, having been attacked by the Soviet 6th Army, when they received the order to counterattack. Disobeying Hitler's order to stand fast and fight to the death. 
Hauser withdrew in front of the Red Army. During Manstein's counteroffensive, the SS Panzer Corps, without support from the Luftwaffe or neighboring German formations, broke through the Soviet line and advanced on Kharkov. Despite orders to encircle Kharkov from the north, the SS Panzer Corps directly attacked in the Third Battle of Kharkov on of March. This led to four days of house-to-house -house fighting before Kharkov was recaptured by the SS Division Leibstandard on 15 March. Two days later, the German forces recaptured Belgorod, creating the salient that, in July 1943, led to the Battle of Kursk. The German offensive cost the Red Army an estimated 70,000 casualties but the house-to-house -house fighting in Kharkov was particularly bloody for the SS Panzer Corps, which lost approximately 44% of its strength by the time operations ended in late March. <laughs> Warsaw Ghetto Uprising the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was a Jewish insurgency that arose within the Warsaw Ghetto from 19 April to 16 May, an effort to prevent the transportation of the remaining population of the ghetto to Treblinka extermination camp. Units involved from the Waffen-SS were 821 Waffen-SS Panzergrenadiers from five reserve and training battalions and one cavalry reserve and training battalion. Kursk For the Battle of Kursk, the SS Panzer Corps was renamed the 2nd SS Panzer Corps and was part of the 4th Panzer Army. The 2nd SS Panzer Corps spearheaded the attack through the Soviet defenses. The attack penetrated to a depth of 35 km miles and was then stopped by the Soviet 1st Tank Army. The Soviet reserves had been sent south to defend against a German attack by the 3rd Panzer Corps. With the loss of their reserves, any hope they may have had of dealing a major defeat to the SS Panzer Corps ended. But the German advances now failed. Despite appalling losses, the Soviet tank armies held the line and prevented the 2nd SS Panzer Corps from making the expected breakthrough. The failure to break through the Soviet tactical zone and the need to break off the assault by the German 9th Army on the northern shoulder of the Kursk salient due to Operation Kutuzov contributed to Hitler's decision to halt the offensive. A parallel attack by the Red Army against the new 6th Army on the Meuse River south of Kharkov necessitated the withdrawal of reserve forces held to exploit any success on the southern shoulder of Kursk. The OKW also had to draw on some German troops from the Eastern Front to bolster the Mediterranean theater following the Anglo-American invasion of Sicily. On 17 July, Hitler called off the operation and ordered a withdrawal. The Soviet Union was not beaten, and the strategic initiative had swung to the Red Army. The Germans were forced onto the defensive as the Red Army began the liberation of Western Russia. <inaudible> Italy The Leibstandart was thereafter sent to Italy to help stabilize the situation there following the deposal of Benito Mussolini by the Badoglio government and the Allied invasion of Sicily, which was the beginning of the Italian campaign. The division left behind its armor and equipment, which was given to Das Reich and Totenkopf. After the Italian surrender and collapse of 8 September 1943, the Leibstandart was ordered to begin disarming nearby Italian units. It also had the task of guarding vital road and rail junctions in the north of Italy and was involved in several skirmishes with partisans. This went smoothly, with the exception of a brief skirmish with Italian troops stationed in Parma on 9 September. By 19 September, all Italian forces in the Po River Plain had been disarmed, but the OKW received reports that elements of the Italian 4th Army were regrouping in Piedmont, near the French border. Joaquin Piper's mechanized 3 Battalion, SS Panzergrenadier Regiment II, was sent to disarm these units. On arriving in the province of Cuneo, Piper was met by an Italian officer who warned that his forces would attack unless Piper's unit vacated the province immediately. After Piper refused, the Italians attacked. Piper's battalion defeated the Italians, and subsequently shelled and burnt down the village of Boves, killing at least 34 civilians. Piper's battalion then disarmed the remaining Italian forces in the area. 
While the Reichsstandart was operating in the north, the 16 SS Reichsführer SS sent a small battlegroup to contain the Anzio landings in January 1944. In March, the bulk of the 1st Italianische Freiwilligen Sturmbrigade or Brigata d'Assalto, voluntary in Italian, was sent to the Anzio beachhead, where they fought alongside their German allies, receiving favorable reports and taking heavy losses. In recognition of their performance, Himmler declared the unit to be fully integrated into the Waffen-SS. Topic: Topic: 1944 expansion. The Waffen-SS expanded again during 1944. January saw the formation of the 19th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS Second Latvian, formed from the two SS infantry brigades as cadre with Latvian conscripts. The 20th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS First Estonian was formed via general conscription in February 1944, around a cadre from the 3 Estonian SS Volunteer Brigade. The 21st Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Skanderbeg First Albanian was formed in March 1944 from Albanian and Kosovan volunteers, which as with other «Eastern formations» were intended for use against «irregular forces». A 2nd Waffen SS Cavalry Division followed in April 1944, the 22nd SS Volunteer Cavalry Division Maria Theresia. The bulk of the troops were Hungarian Army Volksdeutsche conscripts transferred to the Waffen SS following an agreement between Germany and Hungary. The 23rd SS Volunteer Panzer Grenadier Division Nederland followed, formed from the 4th SS Volunteer Panzer Grenadier Brigade Nederland, but it was never more than a large brigade. The 24th Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Karst Jäger was another division that was never more than brigade size, consisting mainly of ethnic German volunteers from Italy and Yugoslavia, along with volunteers from Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, and Ukraine. They were primarily involved in fighting partisans in the Kras region of the Alps on the frontiers of Slovenia, Italy, and Austria, the mountainous terrain requiring specialized mountain troops and equipment. Two Hungarian divisions followed, the 25th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS Hunyadi First Hungarian, and the 26th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS Second Hungarian. These were formed under the authority of the Hungarian Defense Minister, at the request of Himmler. One regiment from the Hungarian Army was ordered to join, but they mostly consisted of Hungarian and Romanian volunteers. The SS Division Langemark was formed next in October 1944, from Flemish volunteers added to the 6th SS Volunteer Sturmbrigade Langemark, but again it was nothing more than a large brigade. The 5th SS Volunteer Sturmbrigade Wallonine was also upgraded to the SS Division Wallonine, but it too was never more than a large brigade. Plans to convert the Kaminsky Brigade into the 29th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS Rona First Russian were dropped after the execution of their commander, Bronislav Kaminsky. Instead the Waffengrenadier Brigade of SS Italian No. 1 became the 29th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS First Italian. The 30th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS Second Russian was formed from the Schutzmannschaft Brigade Siegling. The final new division of late 1944 was the 31st SS Volunteer Grenadier Division, formed from Hungarians and conscripted Volksdeutsche. In November 1944, the 1st Cossack Division, originally mustered by the German Army in 1943, was taken over by the Waffen SS. The SS Fungshauptamt reorganized the division and used further Cossack combat units from the Army and the Ordnungspolizei to form a second Cossack Division. Both divisions were placed under the command of the 15 SS Cossack Cavalry Corps on 1 February 1945. With the transfer of the Volunteer Cossack Stam Regiment 5 from the Freewilligen Stam Division on the same day the takeover of the Cossack units by the Waffen SS was complete. Topic. Course and Cherkasy Pocket The Corson Cherkasy Pocket was formed in January 1944 when units of the 8th Army withdrew to the Panther Wotan Line, a defensive position along the Dnieper River in Ukraine. Two Army Corps were left holding a salient into the Soviet lines extending some 100 kilometers 62 miles. 
the Red Army's 1st and 2nd Ukrainian fronts encircled the pocket. Trapped in the pocket were a total of six German divisions, including the 5 SS Wiking, with the attached 5th SS Volunteer Sturmbrigade Wallenin, and the Estonian SS Battalion Nawa. The Germans broke out in coordination with other German forces from the outside, including the 1 SS Leibstandard. Roughly two out of three encircled men successfully escaped the pocket. Topic. Raid on driver The raid on driver, codenamed Operation Rasselsprung, was an attack by the Waffen SS and Luftwaffe on the command structure of the Yugoslav partisans. Their objective was the elimination of the partisan controlled Supreme Headquarters and the capture of Tito. The offensive took place in April and May 1944. The Waffen SS units involved were the 500th SS Parachute Battalion and the 7 SS Prinz Eugen. The assault started when a small group parachuted into Drybar to secure landing grounds for the following glider force. The 500th SS Parachute Battalion fought their way to Tito's cave headquarters and exchanged heavy gunfire resulting in numerous casualties on both sides. By the time German forces had penetrated into the cave, Tito had already escaped. At the end of the battle, only 200 men of the 500th SS Parachute Battalion remained unwounded. Topic. Baltic states In Estonia, the Battle of Narva started in February. The battle can be divided into two phases, the Battle for Narva Bridgehead from February to July and the Battle of Tannenberg Line from July to September. A number of volunteer and conscript Waffen SS units from Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Estonia fought in Narva. The units were all part of the 3 SS Germanic Panzer Corps in Army Group North, which consisted of the 11th SS Panzergrenadier Division Nordland, the 4th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Brigade Nederland, the 5th SS Volunteer Sturmbrigade Wallenin, the 6th SS Volunteer Sturmbrigade Langemark, and the conscript 20th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS 1st Estonian, under the command of Obergruppenführer Felix Steiner. Also in Army Group North was the 6th SS Corps, which consisted of the 15th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS 1st Latvian and the 19th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS 2nd Latvian. Latvian Waffen SS and German Army units held out in the Courland pocket until the end of the war. Topic. Normandy Operation Overlord, the Allied D Day. Landings in Normandy, took place on 6 June 1944. In preparation for the expected landings, the 1st SS Panzer Corps Leibstandard SS Adolf Hitler was moved to Septoy to the west of Paris in April 1944. The Corps had the 1 SS Leibstandard SS Adolf Hitler, 12 SS Hitlerjugend, the 17 SS Gotts von Berlichingen and the Army's Panzer Lehr Division divisions assigned to it. The Corps was to form a part of General Leo Geyr von Schweppenberg's Panzer Group West, the Western Theater's Armored Reserve. The Corps was restructured on 4 July 1944 and only the 1SS Leibstandard and the 12SS Hitlerjugend remained on strength. After the landings, the first Waffen SS unit in action was the 12SS Hitlerjugend, which arrived at the invasion front on 7 June, in the Conn area. The same day they committed the Ardennes Abbey massacre against Canadian Army prisoners of war. The next unit to arrive was the 17 SS Gotts von Berlichingen on the 11th of June, which came into contact with the 101st Airborne Division. The SS Heavy Panzer Battalion 101 arrived next to protect the left wing of the 1st SS Panzer Corps. The 1 SS Leibstandard arrived towards the end of the month with lead elements becoming embroiled in the British offensive Operation Epsom. The only other Waffen SS unit in France at this time was the 2 SS Das Reich, in Montauban, north of Toulouse. They were ordered north to the landing beaches and on 9 June were responsible for the Tuil massacre, where 99 men were murdered. The next day, they reached Orador sur glane where they massacred 642 French civilians. The 2nd SS Panzer Corps, consisting of the 9th SS Hohenstaufen and 10th SS Frensburg Divisions and the SS Heavy Panzer Battalion 102, was transferred from the Eastern Front to spearhead an offensive to destroy the Allied beachhead. 
However, the British launched Operation Epsom and the two divisions were fed piecemeal into the battle, and launched several counter-attacks over the following days. Without any further reinforcements in men or materiel, the Waffen-SS divisions could not stop the Allied advance. One SS Leibstandart and two SS Das Reich took part in the failed Operation Luttich in early August. The end came in mid-August when the German army was encircled and trapped in the Falaise pocket, including the 1 SS Leibstandart, 10 SS Frensberg and 12 SS Hitlerjugend and the 17 SS Gotts von Berlichingen, while the 2 SS Das Reich and the 9 SS Hohenstaufen were ordered to attack Hill 262 from the outside in order to keep the gap open. By the 22nd of August, the Falaise pocket had been closed, and all German forces west of the Allied lines were dead or in captivity. In the fighting around Hill 262 alone, casualties totaled 2,000 killed and 5,000 taken prisoner. The 12 SS Hitlerjugend had lost 94% of its armor, nearly all of its artillery, and 70% of its vehicles. The division had close to 20,000 men and 150 tanks before the campaign started, and was now reduced to 300 men and 10 tanks. With the German army in full retreat, two further Waffen SS formations entered the battle in France the SS Panzergrenadier Brigade 49 and the SS Panzergrenadier Brigade 51. Both had been formed in June 1944 from staff and students at the SS Junkerschule. They were stationed in Denmark to allow the garrison there to move into France, but were brought forward at the beginning of August to the area south and east of Paris. Both brigades were tasked to hold crossings over the Seine River allowing the army to retreat. Eventually, they were forced back and then withdrew, the surviving troops being incorporated into the 17 SS Gotts von Berlichingen. <laughs> Greece While the bulk of the Waffen SS was now on the Eastern Front or in Normandy, the 4th SS Palaise Panzergrenadier Division was stationed in Greece on internal security duties and anti partisan operations. On 10 June, they committed the Dostomo massacre, when over a period of two hours they went door to door and massacred Greek civilians, reportedly in revenge for a Greek resistance attack. In total, 218 men, women, and children were killed. According to survivors, the SS forces bayoneted babies in their cribs, stabbed pregnant women, and beheaded the village priest. Topic. Italy On the Italian front, the 16 SS Reichsführer SS, conducting anti-partisan operations, is remembered more for the atrocities it perpetrated than its fighting ability. It committed the Santana di Statsima massacre in August 1944 and the Marzabotto massacre between September and October 1944. Topic: <laughs> Finland in Finland, the 6 SS Nord had held its lines during the Soviet summer offensive until it was ordered to withdraw from Finland upon the conclusion of an armistice between Finland and the Soviet Union in September 1944. It then formed the rear guard for the three German corps withdrawing from Finland in Operation Birch, and from September to November 1944 marched 1,600 km to Moai Rana, Norway, where it entrained for the southern end of the country, crossing the Skagerrak to Denmark. Topic. Arnhem and Operation Market Garden In early September 1944, the 2nd SS Panzer Corps 9 SS and 10 SS Frundberg were pulled out of the line and sent to the Arnhem area in the Netherlands. Upon arrival, they began the task of refitting, and the majority of the remaining armoured vehicles were loaded onto trains in preparation for transport to repair depots in Germany. On Sunday, 17 September 1944, the Allies launched Operation Market Garden, and the British 1st Airborne Division was dropped in Oosterbeek, to the west of Arnhem. Realising the threat, Wilhelm Bittrich, commander of 2nd SS Panzer Corps, ordered Hohenstaufen and Frensberg to ready themselves for combat. Also in the area was the Training and Reserve Battalion, 16th SS Division Reichsführer SS. The Allied airborne operation was a failure, and Arnhem was not liberated until 14 April 1945. <inaudible> <inaudible> Warsaw Uprising 
At the other end of Europe, the Waffen SS was dealing with the Warsaw Uprising. Between August and October 1944, the Derwanger Brigade, recruited from criminals and the mentally ill throughout Germany, and the SS Sturm Brigade RONA Ruskaya Osvoboditelnaya Narodnia Armia, Russian National Liberation Army, which was made up of ethnic Russian collaborators, were both sent to Warsaw to put down the uprising. During the battle, the Derwanger behaved atrociously, raping, looting, and killing citizens of Warsaw regardless of whether they belonged to the Polish resistance or not. The unit commander SS Oberführer Oskar Derwanger encouraged their excesses. The unit's behavior was reportedly so bestial and indiscriminate that Himmler was forced to send a battalion of SS military police to ensure the Derwanger convicts did not turn their aggressions against the leadership of the brigade or other nearby German units. At the same time, they were encouraged by Himmler to terrorize freely, take no prisoners, and generally indulge their perverse tendencies. Favored tactics of the Derwanger men during the siege reportedly included the ubiquitous gang rape of female Poles, both women and children, playing bayonet catch with live babies, and torturing captives to death by hacking off their arms, dousing them with gasoline, and setting them alight to run armless and flaming down the street. The Derwanger Brigade committed almost non stop atrocities during this period, in particular the four day Wola massacre. The other unit, Waffen Sturm Brigade RONA, was tasked with clearing the Ochota district in Warsaw that was defended by members of the Polish Home Army. Their attack was planned for the morning of 5 August, but when the time came, the Rona unit could not be found. After some searching by the SS military police, members of the unit were found looting abandoned houses in the rear of the German column. Later, thousands of Polish civilians were killed by the Rona SS men during the events known as the Ochota Massacre. Many victims were also raped. In the following weeks, the Rona unit was moved south to the Wola district, but it fared no better in combat there than it did in Ochota. In one incident, a sub unit of the Rona brigade advanced to loot a captured building on the front line, but was subsequently cut off from the rest of the SS formation and wiped out by the Poles. Following the fiasco, SS Brigadefuhrer Bronislav Vladislavovich Kaminsky, the unit's commander, was called to Wuj to attend a SS leadership conference. He never arrived. Official Nazi sources blamed Polish partisans for an alleged ambush that killed the Rona commander. But, according to various other sources, he was arrested and tried by the SS, or simply shot on the spot by the Gestapo. The behavior of the Rona during the battle was an embarrassment even to the SS, and the alleged rape and murder of two German strength through Joy Girls may have played a part in the eventual execution of the brigade's commander. <laughs> Vistula River Line in late August 1944, 5SS Wicking was ordered back to Modlin on the Vistula River line near Warsaw, where it was to join the newly formed Army Group Vistula. Fighting alongside the Luftwaffe's Fallschirm Panzer Division 1 Hermann Göring, they annihilated the Soviet 3rd Tank Corps. The advent of the Warsaw Uprising brought the Soviet offensive to a halt, and relative peace fell on the front line. The division remained in the Modlin area for the rest of the year, grouped with the 3 SS Totenkopf in the 4th SS Panzer Corps. Heavy defensive battles around Modlin followed for the rest of the year. Together, they helped force the Red Army out of Warsaw and back across the Vistula River, where the front stabilized until January 1945. Topic: <laughs> Ardennes Offensive. The Ardennes Offensive or Battle of the Bulge between 16 December 1944 and 25 January 1945, was a major German offensive through the forested Ardennes Mountains region of Belgium. The Waffen SS units included the 6th Panzer Army under Sepp Dietrich. Created on 26 October 1944, it incorporated the 1st SS Panzer Corps, 1 SS Leibstandart, the 12 SS Hitlerjugend and the SS Heavy Panzer Battalion 101. It also had the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, 2 SS Das Reich and the 9 SS Hohenstaufen. Another unit involved was Otto Skorzeny's SS Panzer Brigade 150. The purpose of the attack was to split the British and American line in half, capture Antwerp, and encircle and destroy four Allied armies, forcing the Western Allies to negotiate a peace treaty on terms favorable to the Axis powers. 
however, advancing through the forests and wooded hills of the Ardennes proved difficult in the winter weather. Initially, the Germans made good progress in the northern end of its advance. However, they ran into unexpectedly strong resistance by the U.S. 2nd and 99th Infantry Divisions. By 23 December, weather conditions started improving, allowing the Allied air forces, which had been grounded, to attack. In increasingly difficult conditions, the German advance slowed. The attack was ultimately a failure. Despite the efforts of the Waffen-SS and the German army, the fuel shortages, stiff American resistance, including in and around the town of Bastogne and Allied air assaults on German supply columns proved too much, costing the Germans 700 tanks and most of their remaining mobile forces in the west. Hitler's failed counteroffensive had used most of Germany's remaining reserves of manpower and materiel, which could not be replaced. During the battle, Kampfgruppe Piper, part of the 1SS Leibstandart, left a path of destruction, which included Waffen-SS men murdering American POWs and unarmed Belgian civilians. It is infamous for the Marmdi Massacre, in which approximately 90 unarmed American prisoners of war were murdered on 17 December 1944. Also during this battle, three, SSPZAA-1 LSSAH captured and shot 11 African-American soldiers from the American 333rd Artillery Battalion in the hamlet of Werrath. Their remains were found by Allied troops two months later. The soldiers had their fingers cut off and legs broken, and one was shot while trying to bandage a comrade's wounds. <laughs> Siege of Budapest. In late December 1944, the Axis forces, including 9th Waffen Mountain Corps of the SS Croatian, defending Budapest, were encircled in the Siege of Budapest. The 4th SS Panzer Corps 3 SS Totenkopf and 5 SS Wiking was ordered south to join Hermann Balk's 6th Army Army Group Balk, which was mustering for a relief effort code named Operation Conrad. As a part of Operation Conrad I, the 4th SS Panzer Corps was committed to action on 1 January 1945, near Tata, with the advance columns of Wiking slamming into the Soviet 4th Guards Army. A heavy battle ensued, with the 5 SS Wiking and 3 SS Totenkopf destroying many of the Soviet tanks. In three days their panzer spearheads had driven 45 kilometers, over half the distance from the start point to Budapest. The Red Army maneuvered forces to block the advance, halting them at Bixky, 28 kilometers (17 miles) from Budapest. Two further attacks, Operations Conrad II and III, also failed. The Hungarian Third Army was besieged in Budapest along with the 9th Waffen Mountain Corps of the SS Croatian, 8 SS Florian Geyer and 22 SS Maria Theresia. The siege lasted from the 29th of December 1944 until the city surrendered unconditionally on the 13th of February 1945. Only 170 men of the 22 SS Maria Theresia made it back to the German lines. Topic: 1945. Topic: 1945 expansion The Waffen-SS continued to expand in 1945. January saw the 32nd SS Volunteer Grenadier Division 30 Janua formed from the remnants of other units and staff from the SS Junkerschules. In February, the Waffen Grenadier Brigade der SS Charlemagne was upgraded to a division and became known as the 33rd Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS Charlemagne, First French. At this time, it had a strength of 7,340 men. The SS Volunteer Grenadier Brigade Landstorm Nederland was upgraded to the 34th SS Volunteer Grenadier Division Landstorm Nederland. The 2nd SS Police Division followed when the 35th SS and Police Grenadier Division was formed from SS police units that had been transferred to the Waffen SS. The Derwanger Brigade was reformed as the 36th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS. As there was now a real shortage of Waffen-SS volunteers and conscripts, units from the Army were attached to bring it up to strength. The 3rd SS Cavalry Division 37th SS Volunteer Cavalry Division Lutzau was formed from the remnants of the 8 SS Florian Geyer and 22 SS Maria Theresia, which had both been virtually destroyed. 
The last Waffen-SS division was the 38th SS Division Nibelungen, which was formed from students and staff from the SS Junkerschule, but consisted of only around 6,000 men, the strength of a normal brigade. Topic. Operation Nordwind Operation Nordwind was the last major German offensive on the Western Front. It began on 1 January 1945 in Alsace and Lorraine in northeastern France, and it ended on 25 January. The initial attack was conducted by three corps of the First Army. By 15 January, at least 17 German divisions including units in the Colmar pocket were engaged, including the 13th SS Army Corps, 17 SS Gotts von Berlichingen and 38 SS Nibelungen and the 6 SS Nord and 10 SS Frensberg. At the same time, the Luftwaffe mounted a large offensive over the skies of France. Some 240 fighters were lost and just as many pilots. It was the last gasp attempt for the Luftwaffe to take back air supremacy from the Western Allies. Topic. Operation Solstice Operation Solstice, or the Stargard Tank Battle, February 1945, was one of the last armored offensive operations on the Eastern Front. It was a limited counterattack by the three corps of the 11th SS Panzer Army, which was being assembled in Pomerania, against the spearheads of the 1st Belarusian Front. Originally planned as a major offensive, it was executed as a more limited attack. It was repulsed by the Red Army, but helped to convince the Soviet High Command to postpone the planned attack on Berlin. Initially, the attack achieved a total surprise, reaching the banks of the Ena River and, on 17 January, Arnswald. Strong Soviet counter-attacks halted the advance, and the operation was called off. The three Germanic SS Panzer Corps, was pulled back to the Stargard and Stettin on the northern Oder River. <laughs> East Pomeranian Offensive the East Pomeranian Offensive lasted from 24 February to 4 April, in Pomerania and West Prussia. The Waffen SS units involved were the 11 SS Nordland, 20 SS Estonian, 23 SS Nederland, 27 SS Landmark, 28 SS Wallonine, all in the 3 Germanic SS Panzer Corps, and the 10th SS Corps, which did not command any SS units. In March 1945, the 10th SS Corps was encircled by the 1st Guards Tank Army, 3rd Shock Army, and the Polish 1st Army in the area of Dramberg. This pocket was destroyed by the Red Army on 7 March 1945. On 8 March 1945, the Soviet forces announced the capture of General Krapp and 8,000 men of the 10th SS Corps. Topic. Operation Spring Awakening after the Ardennes offensive failed, in Hitler's estimation, the Nagy Kanyazha oilfields southwest of Lake Balaton were the most strategically valuable reserves on the Eastern Front. The SS divisions were pulled out and refitted in Germany in preparation for Operation Spring Awakening Hitler ordered Dietrich's 6th SS Panzer Army to take the lead and move to Hungary in order to protect the oilfields and refineries there. The 6th SS Panzer Army was made up of the 1st SS Panzer Corps, 1 SS Leibstandard and 12 SS Hitlerjugend, and the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, 2 SS Das Reich and the 10 SS Frensberg. Also present but not part of the 6th SS Panzer Army was the 4th SS Panzer Corps, 3 SS Totenkopf and 5 SS Wicking. This final German offensive in the east began on the 6th of March. The German forces attacked near Lake Balaton with the 6th SS Panzer Army advancing northwards towards Budapest and the 2nd Panzer Army moving eastwards and south. Dietrich's army made good progress at first, but as they drew near the Danube, the combination of the muddy terrain and strong resistance of the Soviet forces ground them to a halt. The overwhelming numerical superiority of the Red Army made any defense impossible, yet Hitler somehow had believed victory was attainable. After Operation Spring Awakening, the 6th SS Panzer Army withdrew towards Vienna and was involved what became known as the Vienna Offensive. 
The only major force to face the attacking Red Army was the 2nd SS Panzer Corps 2 SS Das Reich and 3 SS Totenkopf, under the command of Wilhelm Bittrich, along with ad hoc forces made up of garrison and anti-aircraft units. Vienna fell to the Soviet forces on 13 April. Bittrich's 2nd SS Panzer Corps had pulled out to the west that evening to avoid encirclement. The LSSAH retreated westward with less than 1,600 men and 16 tanks remaining. This failure is famous for the armband order that followed. The order was issued to the 6th SS Panzer Army commander Sepp Dietrich by Adolf Hitler, who claimed that the troops, and more importantly, the 1 SS Leibstandart, did not fight as the situation demanded. As a mark of disgrace, the Waffen SS units involved in the battle were ordered to remove their distinctive cuff titles. Dietrich did not relay the order to his troops. Topic. Berlin The Army Group Vistula was formed in 1945 to protect Berlin from the advancing Red Army. It fought in the Battle of the Silo Heights 16 to 19 April and the Battle of Halber the 21st of April to the 1st of May, both part of the Battle of Berlin. The Waffen SS was represented by the three Germanic SS Panzer Corps. On the 23rd of April, Brigadefuhrer Wilhelm Monke was appointed by Hitler as battle commander for the center government district Zitadel sector, which included the Reich Chancellery and Führerbunker. Monke's command post was in the bunkers under the Reich Chancellery. He formed Kampfgruppe Monke, Battle Group Monke, divided into two weak regiments. It was made up of the LSSAH Flak Company, replacements from LSSAH Training and Reserve Battalion from Spreenhagen under Standartenführer Anhalt, 600 men from the Begleit Bataillon Reichsführer SS, the Führer Begleit Company, and the Corps Group. 800 men of the LSSAH Guard Battalion assigned to guard the Führer. On 23 April, the Reich Chancellery ordered Brigadefuhrer Gustav Kruckenberg to proceed to Berlin with his men, who were reorganized as Sturmbeteithlon. Assault Battalion. Charlemagne. Between 320 and 330 French troops arrived in Berlin on 24 April after a long detour to avoid Soviet advance columns. Kruckenberg was also appointed the commander of Berlin Defense Sector C. This included the Nordland Division, whose previous commander, Joachim Ziegler, was relieved of command the same day. On 27 April, after a futile defense, the remnants of Nordland were pushed back into the center government district Zetadel sector in defense sector Z. Their Kruckenberg's Nordland headquarters was a carriage in the Stadtmit U-Bahn station. The men of Nordland were now under Monka's overall command. Among the men were French, Latvian, and Scandinavian Waffen SS troops. A heavy artillery bombardment of the center government district had begun on the 20th of April 1945 and lasted until the end of hostilities. Under the intense shelling, the SS troops put up stiff resistance, which led to bitter and bloody street fighting with the Soviet Red Army forces. By the 26th of April, the Nordland defenders were pushed back into the Reichstag and Reich Chancellery. There, over the next few days, the survivors mainly French SS troops from the former 33 SS Charlemagne fought in vain against the Soviet army forces. On 30 April, after receiving news of Hitler's suicide, orders were issued that those who could do so were to break out. Prior to the breakout, Monka briefed all commanders that could be reached within the Zetadel sector about Hitler's death and the planned breakout. The breakout started at 2,300 hours on 1 May. There were ten main groups that attempted to head northwest towards Mecklenburg. Fierce fighting continued all around, especially in the Weidendammer Bridge area. What was left of the 11 SS Nordland under Brigadefuhrer Kruckenberg fought hard in that area, but the Soviet artillery, anti-tank guns and tanks destroyed the groups. Several very small groups managed to reach the Americans at the Elbe's west bank, but most, including Monka's group, could not make it through the Soviet rings. Himmler fled and attempted to go into hiding. Using a forged paybook under the name of Sergeant Heinrich Hitzinger, he fled south on the 11th of May to Friedrichskoog. On the 21st of May, Himmler and two aides were detained at a checkpoint set up by former Soviet POWs and then handed over to the British Army. On 23 May, after admitting his real identity, a doctor attempted to examine him. However, Himmler bit into a hidden cyanide pill and collapsed onto the floor. He was dead within 15 minutes. 
Topic: Divisions. All divisions in the Waffen SS were ordered in a single series of numbers as formed, regardless of type. A total of 38 were formed, beginning with the initial three in 1933 and ramping up to nine alone in 1945. Those tagged with nationalities were at least nominally recruited from those nationalities. Many of the late formed higher numbered units were in fact small battlegroups Kampfgruppen, and divisions in name only. Topic. Commanders Joseph Sepp Dietrich, a former army sergeant with a peasant background, commanded the forerunner of the Waffen SS, the Sonderkommando Berlin. He would command the Leibstandart SS Adolf Hitler from its inception to regiment, brigade, and division. He was then given command of the 1st SS Panzer Corps and by the end of the war was the commander of the 6th SS Panzer Army. Paul Hauser, a former general in the regular army, was chosen by Himmler to transform the SSVT into a credible military organization. He was the first divisional commander of the Waffen-SS when the SSVT was formed into a division for the Battle of France. He went on to command the 2nd SS Panzer Corps and the 7th Army. Artur Fleps, a former Romanian general who joined the Waffen-SS, raised and commanded the 7th SS Volunteer Mountain Division Prinz Eugen then rose to command the 5th SS Mountain Corps which fought the Yugoslav partisans. Felix Steiner, another former army officer and veteran of World War I. He was given command of the SS Regiment Deutschland. He is credited with the creation of small mobile battle groups. He armed his men with submachine guns and grenades instead of rifles and issued camouflage clothing. He commanded the SS Division Wicking and the 3 Germanic SS Panzer Corps. Topic: Casualties. Military historian Rudiger Overmans estimates that the Waffen SS suffered 314,000 dead. Casualty rates were not significantly higher than in the Wehrmacht overall and were comparable to those among the armored divisions of the Army and the Luftwaffe paratroop formations. Criminality The Allgemeine SS was responsible for the administration of both the concentration and extermination camps. Many members of it and the SS Totenkopfverbände subsequently became members of the Waffen SS, forming the initial core of the 3rd SS Totenkopf Division. A number of SS medical personnel who were members of the Waffen SS were convicted of crimes during the Doctor's Trials in Nuremberg, held between 1946 and 1947 for the Nazi human experimentation they performed at the camps. According to the Modern Genocide, the definitive resource and document collection, the Waffen SS had played a paramount role in the ideological war of extermination, Vernichtungskrieg, and not just as frontline or rear area security formations. A third of the Einsatzgruppen, mobile killing squads, members which were responsible for mass murder, especially of Jews, Slavs, and Communists, had been recruited from Waffen SS personnel prior to the invasion of the Soviet Union. The Waffen SS construction office built the gas chambers at Auschwitz, and, according to Rudolf Hoss, about 7,000 served as guards at that camp. Many Waffen SS members and units were responsible for war crimes against civilians and Allied servicemen. After the war, the SS organization as a whole was held to be a criminal organization by the post war German government. Formations such as the Derwanger and Kaminsky Brigades were singled out, and many others participated in large-scale massacres or smaller-scale killings such as murder of 34 captured Allied servicemen ordered by Joseph Kiefer during Operation Bullbasket in 1944, the Hauptmann Affair, or murders perpetrated by Heinrich Boyer. The Wisted Waffen SS units were responsible for the following massacres. Wormhout massacre by SS Leibstandart Adolf Hitler, 1940, France. Le Paradis massacre by SS Division Totenkopf, 1940, France. Pricket swamps, punitive operation by the SS Cavalry Brigade, 1941, USSR. ASCQ massacre by 12th SS Panzer Division Hitlerjugend, 1944, France. 
Jew massacre by SS Division das Reich, 1944, France. Orador Sorglane massacre by SS Division das Reich, 1944, France. Ochota massacre by SS Kaminski Brigade, 1944, Poland. Wola massacre by SS Sturm Brigade Dorwanger, 1944, Poland. Hutapinatska massacre by SS Division Galicia, 1944, Poland. Grains massacre by SS Division Gotts von Berlichingen, 1944, France. My Massacre, also by SS Division Gotts von Berlichingen, 1944, France. Marzaboto Massacre by 16th SS Panzergrenadier Division Reichsführer SS, 1944, Italy. Mandi Massacre by Kampfgruppe Piper, part of 1st SS Panzer Division, 1944, Belgium. Ardiatine Massacre by 2 SS Officers, 1944, Italy. Distomo Massacre by 4th SS Polizei Division, 1944, Greece. Santana di Statsima Massacre by 16th SS Panzergrenadier Division Reichsführer SS, 1944, Italy. Arden Abbey Massacre by 12th SS Panzer Division Hitlerjugend, 1944, Frank F. Linking of the SSVT with the SS Totenkopfverband SSTV, in 1938 raised important questions about Pfaffen SS criminality, since the SSTV were already responsible for the imprisonment, torture, and murder of Jews and other political opponents through providing the personnel for manning the concentration camps. Their leader, Theodore Icke, who was the commandant of Dachau, inspector of the camps, and murderer of Ernst Röhm, later became the commander of the 3rd SS Totenkopf Division. With the invasion of Poland, the Totenkopf Verbände troops were called on to carry out so-called police and security measures in rear areas. What these measures entailed is demonstrated by the record of SS Totenkopf Standart Brandenburg. It arrived in Vloklawek on the 22nd of September 1939 and embarked on a four-day Jewish action that included the burning of synagogues and the execution on mass of the leaders of the Jewish community. On the 29th of September, the Standart traveled to Bydgoszcz to conduct an intelligentsia action. Approximately 800 Polish civilians and what the Sikkerheitsdienst (SD) termed potential resistance leaders were killed. Later the formation became the 3rd SS Panzer Division Totenkopf, but from the start they were among the first executors of a policy of systematic extermination. Waffen SS formations were found guilty of war crimes, especially in the opening and closing phases of the war. In addition to documented atrocities, Waffen SS units assisted in rounding up Eastern European Jews for deportation and utilized scorched earth tactics during rear security operations. Some Waffen SS personnel convalesced at concentration camps, from which they were drawn by serving guard duties. Other members of the Waffen SS were more directly involved in genocide. The end of the war saw a number of war crime trials, including the Mandi Massacre trial. The counts of indictment related to the massacre of more than 300 American prisoners in the vicinity of Mandi, between 16 December 1944 and 13 January 1945, and the massacre of 100 Belgian civilians mainly in the vicinity of Stavelot. During the Nuremberg trials, the Waffen SS was declared a criminal organization for its major involvement in war crimes and for being an integral part of the SS. An exception was made for certain conscripts who were not given a choice as to joining the ranks, and had not committed such crimes. They were determined to be exempt. <laughs> Post-war Germany <laughs> Waffen-SS veterans in post-war Germany Waffen SS veterans in post war Germany played a large role, through publications and political pressure, in the efforts to rehabilitate the reputation of the Waffen SS, which had committed many war crimes during World War II. High ranking German politicians such as Konrad Adenauer, Franz Joseph Strauss, and Kurt Schumacher courted former Waffen SS members and their veteran organization, HIAG, in an effort to tap into the voter potential. The first two, went as far as assisting the organization in attempts to remove and acquit their organization of blame and deflect the blame for war crimes onto the other branches of the SS. 
A small number of veterans served in the new German armed forces, the Bundeswehr, something that raised national and international unease in regards to how it would affect the democratic nature of the new army. SS Major General Heinz Lammerding, who commanded the SS Division Das Reich that perpetrated the Tuil and the Orador Surglane massacres in occupied France, died in 1971, following a successful business career in West Germany. The West German government refused to extradite him to France. A historical review in Germany of the impact of Waffen SS veterans in post war German society continues, and a number of books on the subject have been published in recent years. Waffen SS veterans have received pensions, West Germany's War Victims Assistance Act, or the Bundesversagungsgesetz from the German government. According to the Times of Israel, the benefits come through the Federal Pension Act, which was passed in 1950 to support war victims, whether civilians or veterans of the Wehrmacht or Waffen-SS. <laughs> HIAG lobby group HIAG German, Hilfsgemeinschaft auf Gegenseitigkeit der Anschhorigen der ehemaligen Waffen-SS, literally Mutual Aid Association of Former Waffen-SS Members", was a lobby group and a revisionist veterans organization founded by former high-ranking Waffen-SS personnel in West Germany in 1951. It campaigned for the legal, economic and historical rehabilitation of the Waffen-SS, using contacts with political parties to manipulate them for its purposes. Kurt Meyer, a convicted war criminal, was HIAG's most effective spokesperson. HIAG's historical revisionism encompassed multi pronged propaganda efforts, including periodicals, books, and public speeches, alongside a publishing house that served as a platform for its publicity aims. This extensive body of work, 57 book titles, and more than 50 years of monthly periodicals, have been described by historians as revisionist apologia, a chorus of self justification. Crucible of historical revisionism, false, and outrageous claims. Most important works of Waffen SS apologist literature, in reference to books by Hauser and Steiner, and exculpating multi volume chronicle, in reference to the history of the SS division Leibstandart, always in touch with its Nazi past. HIAG was a subject of significant controversy, both in West Germany and abroad, since its founding. The organization drifted into right-wing extremism in its later history. It was disbanded in 1992 at the federal level, but local groups, along with the organization's monthly periodical, continued to exist at least into the 2000s, while the HIAG leadership only partially achieved the goals of legal and economic rehabilitation of Waffen-SS, falling short of their extravagant fantasies about Waffen-SS's past and future. HIAG's propaganda efforts have led to a reshaping of the image of Waffen-SS in popular culture. The results are still felt, with scholarly works being drowned out by a "...veritable avalanche of titles," including amateur historical studies, memoirs, picture books, websites, and wargames. See also German war crimes Glossary of Nazi Germany List of Knights Cross recipients of the Waffen-SS List of SS personnel List of Waffen-SS units Signal Corps of the Wehrmacht and Waffen-SS SS Standard Kurt Eggers SS and Police Leader Table of Ranks and Insignia of the Waffen-SS Uniforms and Insignia of the Schutzstaffel equals equals explanatory notes